1970 to 1971, Linda McKinley High School had upwards of 1,800 students. By May, months of racial tension had boiled over. Now, there are thousands of versions uh, about what happened that school year. A new documentary now in editing highlights the successes of students, teenagers who had been working with administrators all year advocating for racial equity and black history and studies programs. Shutdown looks at the attempts to incorporate change at the high school that serves the once all white Linden community. Claims of excessive force by police and the effects of a school year brought to an abrupt end. Tonight, with the help of the film's executive producer and the director, a look at several events that aren't widely discussed now more than five decades later. Guess you could say we were just regular kids uh, at the time. We just became involved in some things that uh, uh, actually were bigger than us. And, and we matured a lot during that period of time. In high school, John Whitaker helped to lead a group, an unofficial council of black students pushing for changes at Lyndon McKinley. The group, along with other students, had no idea 1971 would become a tumultuous year. In the middle of the program, and it might have been right at the beginning. And I remember being on that stage. Individual students, students that we knew, threw some papers over the side of the balcony, disrupted the entire program. And I remember seeing the guy take off running. The leaflets that they dropped were incitement. They were basically a white power type things. And to have this story that really I think captures you know, what's happening as Lyndon is moving from a predominantly white neighborhood to a predominantly black neighborhood and how that plays out in that school is just a really compelling story. Dr. Simone Drake is a professor of African American Studies at The Ohio State University, executive producer of the documentary Shutdown, and daughter of 1972 and 73 Linda McKinley graduates. Retelling the story, it was for many people listening to them, it seemed like it was yesterday. Energized student activists marched more than four and a half miles from Linda McKinley to Franklin Park for a rally commemorating Malcolm X's birthday. The human rights activists had been killed six years earlier. There were no great speeches that I recall. Few people spoke. Nothing strikes my memory. To me, the more memorable thing was the actual walk itself. I think that empowered us. It made me feel like we we're on the right track. Before and in the days following the rally, there were multiple instances of American flags inside and in front of the school being removed or replaced with the black nationalist flag. Come on. Uh, I, I was very uh, glad and proud that that had taken place. Each time administrators returned the flag, that same week a faction of black students called an unauthorized assembly. And when all of the students assembled in the auditorium, the administration had called the police department. A 71 graduate who is black told me off camera she recalls administrators having things under control and that they did not call police. Another told me a teacher warned her officers were on the way. All remember an influx of police entering the building. And that's when everything just went chaotic. And then they got turned loose to come into the school to, to uh, evacuate the school. I mean, these guys had guns and everything. And, and um, that, was, that was a frightening situation. There would be students who would refuse to go to their classrooms, and they're walking up and down the hallways and agitating for one side or the other. My visual visualization of it that day was watching the police walking up the walkway with clubs and black gloves, pulling up their gloves as if they're getting ready to really unleash uh, when they got into the into the building and that's exactly what happened. Groups of students and some teachers hid in the music room as police used force to evacuate the building. The world needs to know that this happened. They ought to see what our classmates suffered through. Administrators went back and forth closing and reopening the school as the unrest that Linda McKinley played out over several days. Channel 4 covered arrest at the school. Officers took into custody students, staff members, even an OSU professor who encouraged students to push a black agenda. School ended abruptly. I mean, first we we're going to school and all of a sudden there was no more school. Does this mean the school will be closed in general until the end of next week? 
It means that the school will be open only to seniors. During final exams, officers patrolled the halls and grounds of Lyndon McKinley. A mother who had gone to the school to remove her son from the building had a medical episode in the office. A vice principal rushed to get the student from the upstairs library. That administrator, who left his ID in his office, ran into police. He was asked to identify himself by a police officer, and he refused to do so. In fact, as I understand it, he uh, shoved the police officer against one of the walls. A former student says otherwise. We saw our vice principal being manhandled from the third floor down to the second floor where we were. He was not going quietly. He was trying to tell them that he was the vice principal of the school. And they didn't care what he was saying. They decided that he was being too resistive and they maced him. Officers also arrested two teachers who tried to help the administrator. The rumors circulating about excessive force on the part of the police department today. Would you speak to this? Now, if he simply had had the badge on as he had been told by the school board, or if he had identified himself when the police officer asked him who he was, then he would never have been stopped. He would never have been questioned. He wouldn't have gotten into the altercation with a police officer, and he ultimately would not have been arrested. So maybe an excessive force was used, but it certainly was justified under the circumstances. The class of 1971 graduated, then life went on. You go somewhere and you're trying to get a job. And they say, well, where'd you graduate high school? You say, Lynn McKinley. It's like, oh, 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 oh. Everybody had losses from there. You know, I, c I can see it happening right now. I don't think that will ever go away uh, because it was so traumatic. Gene Thomas, the 1971 senior class vice president, married the student council president, Stan Harris. She went on to a 37-year career in education, 12 as superintendent of Columbus City Schools. If I could have advised the principal at that time and the superintendent at that time, it would have been to sit down and talk with students. Let's find someone and staff who can facilitate discussion about not only how we're feeling but how, and, and why we're feeling the way we're feeling, but where do we go from here? And I will tell you, because it didn't happen at Linden, I think Linden is forever scarred. Dr. Harris says the class remains divided over the events of that year. In fact, few of the former white students reached wanted to participate in the documentary. Many from that class, including John Whitaker, who you heard from and who has since died, admit not all of their classmates exhibited the best behavior at times when interacting with administrators and police. Shutdown also features an interview with the vice principal who was arrested and has more about the efforts of that unofficial black student council. Producers hope to hold viewings this spring.